Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture number 18. In lecture number 17, we have discussed various steps which we can follow in the design of a one-way slab. In the earlier, we have discussed what is the in actual slab and uh, how you can differentiate between one-way slab as well as two-way slab. So in today's, we will be taking a design problem and uh, we will be going to design a one-way slab that is a simplest prototype of a one-way slab. Now let us discuss first of all the statement of the problem which we have to design today. Uh, and the problem is a design a floor slab for an interior type of uh, room. That means interior room means it is not directly exposed to weather conditions or weather effects with a clear dimension 4 meter by 9 meter. So, span length is 4 meter as well as 9 meter. So, LX and LY later on we will discuss. For a building which is located in an industrial area of Nagpur, slab is resting on 200 millimeter thick masonry wall. So, it is very much clear that the design of the floor slab will be as a simply supported slab. We can assume live load of 4.5 kN per meter square as well as dead load due to finishes and the partition etc. We can take this value 1.5 kN per meter square and we can assume any grade of concrete which is relevant to the provisions of IS 456 based on the uh, exposure conditions of the slab where it is located and the grade of steel which we are going to use is FE 450. Now let us continue the solution. Very step step number one is we have to select the grade of concrete as we discussed. Grade of steel is already given FE 450. Now grade of concrete as uh, given in the statement of the problem, the width of the masonry support is 30 millimeter. This much. Uh, Data which is available, and uh, since the slab is supposed to be not exposed to the external environment because it exists in the interior of the room, so we can assume as per IS 456 that uh, the slab is going to be exposed to the mild type or experience mild type of conditions, and accordingly, we can take the grade of concrete as M20. And uh, grade of steel as given is FU 450. And uh, based on the weather conditions, weather exposure conditions, we can take clear cover for reinforcement as 30 millimeter. Now, effective cover we can assume as a 50 millimeter. And uh, let us uh, say adopting M20 grade of concrete and steel reinforcement steel bars. Of HYSD FE 415 grade. Now the design of the section will be according to the provisions mentioned in IS 426 as a simply supported type of a slab. Now let us go through step number two. Step number two here we are going to fix the dimensions of the section based on the requirement and uh, as mentioned in the statement that the size of the slab is 4 meter by 9 meter that is the clear dimensions so we can take the shorter span length is 4 meters that lx we can take it as 4 meters and the longer dimension that is the larger span is ly is 9 meters and uh, we, if we take the ratio of ly by lx that is 9 by 4 so it is coming out to be 2.21 so which is greater than 2 so, as uh, per the provisions of the slab, that means how to differentiate the slab, whether it is one way slab or it is two way slab. So, you are uh, already know that since LY by LX ratios and length ratio is more than two, so this type of slab we need to design as a one way slab. And uh, by taking L by D ratio is equal to 28 from IS 456. As per the suggestions given by IS 426. So, taking L by D 28, we can get 
the effective depth uh, required of the slab it comes out to be 142 millimeter so this can be taken as the minimum type minimum value and uh, maybe we can provide uh, d is equal to 140 so it does not mean that uh, if uh, you come after calculation 142 millimeter then you have to take 142 or higher than that but uh, because since is it a trial you can uh, take it a round figure so i have taken that effective depth is equal to 140 millimeter instead of going beyond 142 millimeter because we don't have to uh, take into consideration the guideline as it is so based on your experience and uh, based on the whatever the experience you are available so we can take that uh, for the trial type of section we can assume uh, a round figure type of uh, depth that is 140 millimeter we have taken because we need not to worry because later on in the when we are going to design and uh, as per the design steps we have to apply various checks so if you are uh, uh, depth uh, value which you have assumed you now keep in mind this is the value which we are which we have assumed only so later on applying the various checks we will be going to design and uh, at the end we will be able to design a very safe type of uh, beam that mean beam uh, sorry slab which is uh, having stability as well as economy so both the criteria we have to take into account stability strength as well as the economy so uh, we can adopt uh, here we are adopting 12 mm diameter bar as main reinforcement you can uh, just assume it as a 10 mm dia bars it's no there is no any issue we can take so uh, in this uh, problem i have just taken a uh, main reinforcement having 12 mm dia bars and uh, distribution steel i have taken as a 10 mm dia bars now based on the calculation we can uh, find out what is the overall depth of the section so overall depth of the section as you are aware many times we have done the calculation in case of design of uh, singly reinforced bmw reinforced etc so what will be the overall depth that is the effective depth of the section plus effective cover which we have to take into consideration so as you are aware we have taken 30 millimeter as clear cover and uh, 12 mm dia bars we have taken as main reinforcement so accordingly 6 mm will be the half of this diameter that means uh, effective uh, depth plus effective cover so effective cover will be composed of or addition of uh, clear cover plus half of the diameter of the main reinforcement so accordingly we got the value 176 millimeter and uh, we have adopted overall depth of the section overall depth of the slab as 180 millimeter as well as effective depth will work out to be 144 millimeter now step number three we have to calculate the effective span length and uh, for this uh, guideline are given in is 4.6 <coughs> So we have to just do the calculation that uh, the very first step is effective span effective span is given by lc plus d and uh, you are aware this lc is the clear span plus uh, small d is the effective depth so 4.0 plus this 144 millimeter it is 0.144 meter so it comes out to be 4.144 meter and uh, second point is the center to center of support length we have to take into consideration so 4 meter plus uh, is 230 was the uh, width of the support so we have taken so that is equal to 4.23 meter so we have to take the least value as per codal provision so we have taken l of t is equal to 4.144 meter so that means whatever the calculation we are going to do later on you will be keeping L effective is equal to 4.144 meters. Now in step number 4, uh, here we are going to calculate what are the various loads, what will be the bending moment on the slab, maximum bending moment as well as shear force. So all these type of calculation we are going to do in step number 4. 
So first of all, uh, very first step is we have to calculate the self weight of slab per meter width. And uh, you can see, see here in this diagram, you see the diagram of the slab which is supported by simply having simple supports on both the ends and uh, it is supported in the shorter span that is LX and uh, that we have taken as 4 meter and uh, LY is the longer span that is 9 meter. So what we have to do, we have to design the slab since it is a one way type of slab so we will be taking into consideration shorter span as the effective span which we have uh, taken in the calculation in the step number 3 and what we are going to design the as per the methodology of the slab design we will be designing a strip of 1 meter that is 1000 millimeter width so we are going to design whatever we whether the re reinforcement etc so whatever the design parameters we will be taking into consideration uh, this slab portion that is strip of uh, 1000 millimeter so you can say that it is just like a, a beam having width 1000 millimeter and having span length as that is L active and having depth as we have assumed in uh, earlier step that is accordingly you can take the effective depth as well as the overall depth so this will be the overall depth and uh, this will be the width of the slab which you are going to get in the calculation. So uh, accordingly we have to calculate the self weight of the slab per meter width which I have mentioned here. So that is the dead load of the slab and uh, you can use this formula that is 1 meter and uh, 0.18 because we have taken overall depth as 180 millimeter and uh, 25 is the unit weight of the RCC. So accordingly you are able to get this uh, 4.5 kilometer per meter square. Now dead load due to finishes etc. Uh, whether it is given then it's okay otherwise we have to assume the value. So here in the numerical problem or design problem dead load due to finishes is already given it is 1.5 kilometer per meter square and uh, live on the slab live load on the slab is also given it is 4.5 kN per meter square so we have taken this value so ultimately uh, first of all we have calculated the dead weight of the slab itself and the dead weight of the finishes whatever be the finishing material on the slab and the third one is the live load on the slab per meter weight so adding all these three values we are able to get total load so that is WD it is equal to 10.5 kilometer per meter square. Now you keep in mind that this will be in the form of a UDL. Uh, and uh, you may ask the question that uh, in case of a UDL, the unit is kilonewton per meter. But here we have taken unit kilonewton per meter square because initially we have taken width is equal to one meter. So that's why we are uh, taking unit in kilonewton per meter square. So total design factor load for which is the slab dimensions or reinforcement we have to design. So we are applying a partial safety factor. So partial safety factor of 1.5 for the loading we have taken into account. Multiply by the total dead load or total load on the slab including dead load as well as live load. So ultimately we are getting this value that a total design factor load. WD which, need, which we need uh, in the calculation of the design bending moment as well as the design shear force. So here total load is 15.75 kN per meter square that will be termed as design factor load. Now for a simply supported beam or slab, uh, here we can write as a slab, simply supported beam or slab whatever we the maximum bending moment is always at the mid of the span. So I have taken here beam we have written here because we are just going to design this portion of the slab or this strip of the slab just like a beam. So uh, any calculation related to beam is also applicable to the design of the slab. So accordingly if a slab is simply supported or a beam is simply supported, the maximum bending moment will be as the mid of the span in case of a simply supported and formula is WD L effective square by 8. 
so this is the standard formula which we um, remember in case of a simply supported type of a beam or simply supported type of slab and uh, accordingly factored ultimate bending moment we can get by putting all the values uh, which we have taken here that is wd is equal to 15.75 kilonewton per meter square and l effective we have taken 4.144 meter so accordingly we are able to work out what is the factored ultimate bending moment for which the slab dimensions or design of slab we have to do that is 33.80 kilonewton meter so we have to always keep in mind that whatever the calculation we are doing that we are doing for one meter uh, strip length that is strip of one meter length and uh, factored shear force ultimate factor shear force is always given by wl by 2 in case of a simply supported by section slab so it comes out to be 32.634 kilonewton now in now in step number five what we are going to do we have to do the calculations for the depth of the slab which is required so that it can resist the ultimate factored bending moment so again as uh, per the design methodology and uh, as per our requirement of uh, economical section we can design or we are assuming here that section is a balanced type of section and we can use this formula as already we have used many times that mu ultimate bending moment that is factored ultimate bending moment is given by 0.138 fckvd square here you have to note down one thing very clearly that every time the width of the section you will be taking 1000 millimeter because as mentioned in the step number four we are designing the slab in the form of strips so that strip is uh, 1000 millimeter that is one meter so depth required that is affected depth required we can uh, just uh, get from the formula this formula by rearranging in this format so you can see here mu value we have taken that is 33.80 10 raised to power 6 here, which is not 106, 10 raised to power 6 and uh, 0.138 into FCK is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete, which we have assumed as M20 grade of concrete. So we have taken the value M20, that is 20, and the uh, width of the section as already discussed, it is 1000 millimeter. So after doing all the calculation, we are getting a value that means the effective depth required uh, for this. Uh, uh, one way slab that is simply supported one way slab what is the effective depth required to take care of uh, this much uh, bending movement and that depth required is 1110.66 millimeter and uh, we have provided already uh, affected depth that is 144 millimeter so it's okay that means uh, whatever the depth we have provided it is uh, greater than the depth required so we can say here that check for the depth required is okay. So depth provided is sufficient to resist the bending moment. Now, what we have to check here for uh, ductility and other parameters. So because we have assumed it is a balanced section. So ultimately we have to design it as a under reinforced section, neither over reinforced section. So then you have to calculate x u by d ratio uh, by this formula which we have already taken in case of a previous type of a numerical problem. And uh, after putting all the values, we are getting x u by d ratio that is equal to 0 0.2078. And uh, from this, you can calculate x u value 29.92. And x u max by d value which is given in is 456 that is the limiting value which we can take that is 0.48 uh, for m20 grade of concrete and fe415 steel so it is very much clear that x u by d which is coming out to be from our assumed section that is 0 .0, uh, 0.2078 and uh, which is less than 0.48 so that means we can say 
this section is under reinforced which is uh, okay as per the requirements of uh, IS 456. Now in step number 6 what we have to do we have to find out the area of steel which is required to take care of this bending moment as well as shear force which that means loading can be effectively and safely can be taken care of. So step number 6 will be devoted to reinforcement calculations. So first of all we have to calculate since it is a one way type of slab so uh, in main reinforcement will be provided in one direction and in other direction we will be providing minimum reinforcement which is called as a secondary reinforcement for distribution steel. So in first step we are going to calculate the required area of main steel sometimes it is also known as primary steel that is AST1. So we can uh, use the formula already given that is uh, AST1 which is the primary steel. So after doing all the calculations what we are getting, we are getting that uh, required area of primary steel or main reinforcement is 712 millimeter square which can take care of this much bending moment based on the depth and uh, steel which we have provided. And uh, reinforcement area this much uh, that is 712 which is the requirement as a main steel we have to provide in 1000 millimeter width of the slab based on the center to center spacing. So again I am emphasizing here that we uh, you have to keep in mind that whatever the calculation we are doing that we are doing for uh, the slab portion that is step of the slab having width is equal to 1000 millimeter. So required spacing that means if you have to provide this much area then what should be the spacing required so that we can uh, put the reinforcement that means reinforcement bars we can provide. So you remember in the previous steps we have uh, just assumed 12 mm dia bar in case of a main reinforcement. So the spacing required we can work out uh, here because 1 meter, 1 meter is the width of the step and 113.10 will be the area of the 1 bar that is 12 mm bar and the 700 will be the area of reinforcement which is required. So what we are getting here that this much uh, spacing is required and uh, that means if you provide steel bar at this much spacing then you will be able to get steel area is equal to 712 millimeter square. Again we are rounding off or uh, we will be providing uh, spacing lesser than this so that uh, more number of bars can be provided and the area of reinforcement which we will be able to provide should be greater than the area of steel required uh, maybe by uh, small small changes or uh, some additional steel we can provide. Now here we have to apply the check as per clause 26.3.3 part B that what is the codal requirement, how code, code is restricting the maximum spacing limit. So based on this step and after doing the calculation, I am able to get that uh, maximum spacing which code is limiting here, that is 300 millimeter center to center. And uh, as per our requirement, it, it is 158.34. So we can uh, go for a 12 mm dia, high strength steel bar at 150 center to center as main reinforcement and when we provide steel bars at a spacing of 150 millimeter center to center then whatever the area provided that will be 754 millimeter square so it is uh, greater than 712 which was the requirement so we can say the main reinforcement uh, by providing 12 mm dia bar at a spacing 150 mm center to center is sufficient so you can see here how to or what should be the methodology to provide the main reinforcement that means in which direction the main reinforcement is there. So this will be the main reinforcement that means you have to provide main reinforcement parallel to the smaller span or a shorter span and uh, the spacing between these bars that should be 150 mm. So that means whatever the spacing we are providing that is 150 mm. 
center to center between two bars. So these red color bars which I have shown here, this will be the main reinforcement and the heavy 12 mm dial bars. Now in this step, we are going to design the distribution steel. So how much is the distribution steel required? And uh, we can refer the guideline given in clause number 26.5.2.1 onward. So this distribution steel as we have discussed in lecture number even 17, that this will be provided to take care of uh, temperature stresses. And uh, it is also known as secondary type of steel, that means steel or distribution steel. So as per codal provision, we have to provide minimum steel uh, as a distribution steel. So what code is suggesting, we can provide minimum steel as a distribution steel. And uh, for FE415 type of steel, we can provide 0.12% of the sectional area of flap. So that means this uh, area, distribution area of steel is equal to 0.12% of the sectional area of slab. So accordingly, we can uh, calculate because uh, overall depth was 180 mm we have taken and width of the, uh, this step is we have taken in the previous step that is 1000 millimeter. So accordingly, by taking 0.12% of the steel, that comes out to be 216 millimeter square. So this much is the steel which we have to provide as a uh, secondary reinforcement or a distribution steel and this distribution steel will be provided above the main reinforcement. So whatever the spacing required if we have to provide 216 millimeter square area of distribution steel and uh, you may remember that in previous step what was the assumption we have taken 10 mm dia bar as a distribution steel. So accordingly, the required spacing we have worked out. So it comes out to be 363.3 millimeter center to center. So this much spacing, if we are able to provide this much spacing, then we will be able to get area of steel as a distribution steel that is 216 millimeter square. So maximum spacing limit as per clause number 26.3.3 part B is 300 millimeter center to center. Now you can uh, compare these two values as per our requirement spacing is 363 but here code is limiting it up to 300. So it means you can't go beyond 300 millimeter center to center spacing. So ultimately what we have done we have provided 10 mm dia steel bar at 300 millimeter center to center spacing as a distribution reinforcement. So this was the point of uh, discussion which you have to keep into mind. That means if required spacing is 363, but here code restriction is maximum 300. So you can't go beyond 300. So that's why we have taken 300 millimeter center to center. And uh, moreover, when you provide spacing 300 millimeter center to center, the ultimately more steel will be provided, which will be greater than 216 millimeter square. So uh, here we can uh, say that uh, the green bars which we have taken and uh, that is the distribution steel and the uh, red color bars are the main reinforcement which we have provided. Now in step number 7 we are uh, going to calculate and uh, check whether the slab is safe in shear and uh, as per uh, codal provision that is uh, uh, clause number 40 of IS 456. Even in uh, lecture number 17, I have mentioned that in general, because slab thickness is very less, but its dimensions are greater. So generally, uh, inner type of slabs, which is having lesser thickness, they are uh, safe in case of shear. So now in what is the case of uh, our problem, which we are designing, whether it is safe in shear or not, so that we are going to check in this step. So critical section is always uh, as per uh, IS code provision is taken at a distance uh, that is equal to effective depth of the section from the face of the support. But we have calculated this uh, factored ultimate shear force at the center of the support so which is greater than whichever you work out at a distance d. So for the calculation purpose we have taken this value into consideration. 
and uh, accordingly nominally shear stress from clause number 40 that's tau b v u by v t so v u we have taken 32.634 into this is a uh, 10 raised to power 3 so that means you can take it as 10 raised to power 3 and uh, width of the section we have taken that is 1000 millimeter and uh, effective depth is 144 so after doing the calculation we are able to get the value of tau b that is nominal shear stress is equal to 0.227 newton per millimeter square now what is the design shear strength of the section and uh, the tau c we can take this value from table number 19 since the percentage of uh, main steel which we have provided that was 715 so this was the area of steel which we have provided so from this formula we are able to get what is the percentage of steel which we have provided so uh, this is the maximum area of steel and its value come out to be 0.523 percent so this is the percentage of uh, main steel but what we are doing and uh, for the case of economy as we have discussed in lecture number 17 we need not to take all the bars of uh, this main reinforcement the support level so what we are doing we are providing alternate bars as a bent up bars that means every alternate bar we are bending up and uh, taking it into into the top of the uh, top level of the slab you can say and uh, that bent up bars can be lifted from at a distance 0.1 lx from the face of the support yeah, this is the span length and uh, 0.1 uh, you can take it as a factor so this much value we have to calculate from the face of the support so that means it is very much clear since we are providing every alternate bar as a bent up and uh, other alternate bar we are taking into the support section so only 50 percent of steel will reach at the support section at uh, for a tension reinforcement so that means percentage of steel which we have provided at the section that is at the support level where shear check we have to apply so that comes out to be 0.261 percent so based on this value this uh, value of steel a percentage of steel as well as grade of concrete which is m20 we have to work out from table number 19 that means what is the value of the tau c design shear strength of the section and uh, this is part of the table number 19 i have taken so that means uh, this is the percentage of steel which we have provided and the tau c so since uh, we have taken m20 grade of concrete and uh, our value of percentage of steel lies in between 0.25 and uh, 0.5 so that means tau c value will be between 0.36 and 0.48 so by interpolating we are able to get the value of tau c that is 0.3652 which is between 0.36 and 0.48. Now, this tau c value we have to compare with the tau b value, which is 0.27. So, you can easily see here the design shear strength of the section of the slab tau c is greater than tau v. So, that means we can say the slab which we are designing is safe in shear. So, since tau c is greater than tau c, its uh, own capacity of taking care of the shear stress is. Uh, quite greater than the she uh, shear stresses which are coming on the section so the section is safe in shear so no shear uh, reinforcement is required but uh, sometimes uh, we can see that code mention mentions that if tau c is greater than tau b uh, then we have to provide minimum uh, steel as a shear steel also. since uh, in case of a one way type of slab and having very lesser effective depth it is very difficult to provide shear reinforcement moreover here what we are doing we are taking 50 percent of steel uh, in the top of the support level that is bent up bars so this bent up bar itself will be uh, in shear strength to the slab so ultimately uh, our section will remain safe in shear now step number eight that is the check for deflection and uh, we can refer clause number 23.2.1 of IS 456-2000 and the check for deflection we have to apply as we have discussed as per the guidelines 
and as per codal guideline code is mentioning that lxyd maximum value should be lesser than this that is 20 which we have taken 20 into kt so kt can be obtained from figure number 4 that is is 456 and uh, actual L by D ratio which we have taken since we have provided effective depth 144 and uh, span length is 4000. So actual L X by D ratio comes out to be 27.77 and we have to find out what is the codal provision, what is the restriction from the code. And uh, for calculation of this KT value we can refer figure number 4 and for referring figure number 4 we require first of all we have to do the calculation and find out what is FST which is given by this formula in the code uh, itself that is below the figure number 4 that is equal to 0.58 FY area of steel which was required divided by area of steel which we have provided and the area of steel required was 712 area of steel which we have provided is 7 number 715 so ultimately we have to uh, take the value of ST, FST is equal to 227. So accordingly, based on this value 227, we have to select uh, what the location of the curve in figure number 4. And the percentage of steel we have taken 0.523 and FST 227. So accordingly, if you uh, see the figure number 4, you will be able to get the value of uh, KT approximately 1.40. 42 and uh, hence uh, 20 into kt will come out to be 28.4 so ultimately whatever the l by d ratio we have provided is less than l by d limited so it's okay we are not uh, going beyond the limiting value so we are following the codal guideline and uh, this 27.77 is less than 28.4 now somebody may uh, ask the question that uh, since uh, 27.77 is very near to 28.4 so if uh, it was greater than then accordingly you have to revise the section but here since the deflection check is okay so we need not to revise the section so we can uh, say that uh, the slab which we are designing is uh, safe in deflection or check for deflection is now step number nine which is very important step here where we have to do the calculation for development length that means we have to apply the check for development length and for the guidelines you can refer clause number so we can refer clause number 26.2.1 of IS456 so this was a diagram this diagram is for a representation purpose that means you see the main reinforcement which we have provided and uh, you see the shorter dimensions of the slab, shorter span length of the slab and what we are doing 50% bars of main reinforcement we are providing as a bent up bar. So these bent up bars are taken or lifted at a distance 0.1 L from the face of the support and uh, distribution steel which we have are providing which we are providing above the main reinforcement so black color are main reinforcement and uh, blue color rings which you can see that is the uh, distribution steel which we have provided so we have to take into consideration all these uh, information that we have provided bent up bars so accordingly we have to decide or we have to apply the check for the development length now as per code provision uh, development length required is given by this formula we can calculate and uh, you know all the terminology what is sigma s what is tau bd phi etc so after uh, putting all the values here we are able to get that uh, development length required uh, that ld comes out to be 564.2 millimeter this much is the development length required so that there should be a perfect bond between the steel and the concrete and there should not be any slippage of the steel bars or failure of steel bar or failure of bond between steel and concrete because the whole slab and the reinforcement they have to act as a composite section now as per clause number 26.2.3 
0.3 part A. First of all, we have to check that what is the embedment length which can be possible. So, embedment length of bar in support, that means you are taking um, uh, within the support, that means from the face of the support, whatever the length you are able to carry. So, uh, you can say this will be the development length or embedment length, more appropriately, embedment length. So, as per codal provision, code is suggesting that this uh, embedment length of bar within the support must be greater than LD by 3. So, LD we have already calculated. Now, what is uh, effective length? Uh, that is mainly embedment length in the or effective length of the steel bar in the support, which is uh, called as embedment length of bar in the support. So, that we can easily calculate that width of the support, whatever is the width of the support, minus clear cover, which we have to keep. So, width of the support minus clear cover, and uh, that comes out to be since width of the support is 230 millimeter, so it is a masonry wall 230 millimeter, and uh, 30 millimeter is the clear cover which we require. So, accordingly, we are able to get embedment length maximum up to 200 millimeter. And the uh, second point is as uh, mentioned in the code is we have to uh, as we have already taken that LD by 3. So, LD by 3 comes out to be approximately. 188 millimeter. So you can uh, see that uh, L effective, that is embedment length, is uh, greater than LD by 3. So since it is 200 and this is 188, so we can say this uh, particular point is okay, or as you can say we are following the codal uh, clause, code clause that is 26.2.33A part is okay. Now here, another uh, clause 26.2.3.3, that is C part is also applicable in our case. So, what C part uh, states that at in case of a simple support, this uh, development length which is required, that should be less than or equal to 1.3 into M1B, M1 upon B plus L naught. And uh, since alternate bars we have bent up, that's why I have shown this diagram here. So, only 50% uh, steel bars are uh, going directly to the support. 50% we have lifted. So, we can say the main reinforcement which we have provided, only 50% of that is able to take care of the bending moment. And uh, we know that bending moment is negligible at the support, even at the central support, uh, bending moment in case of simple support is zero. So, uh, what we are uh, taking here that only 50% of the ultimate movement, uh, ultimate bending movement is uh, effective here. So, M1 value comes out to be 16.9 kilonewton meter. And uh, shear force we have already calculated 32.634 kilonewton. And L0 which is uh, the point which we have to understand more clearly that what is L0? Anchorage length of then, so you can see here we have provided. If uh, I take some another another color, so you can see here we, this much uh, steel we have provided as embedment steel. So up to this, but uh, more particularly, uh, okay, uh, let me erase it. So, Okay. So, you can uh, see from the face of the support, that means within support, this much steel you have provided as embedment steel. So, that is L, uh, L, uh, LE we have taken. And uh, here what we are providing, we are providing a bend in the steel. Uh, you can see here vertical bend. That means uh, this is the steel. Steel is provided like this. So, this bend, how much is this bend? Sometimes we provide hook, but here uh, we are providing bend big, uh, since the hooks are not required in case of a high strength steel. So, this will be the, how much will be the anchorage length of bend as per IS coder provision. So, okay. so we have to refer here uh, clause number 26.2.2.1. 
so information is available in this code and uh, what is the information code is suggesting that anchorage value of the band so this band will definitely having some anchorage so anchorage value band shall be taken as four times the diameter bar for each 45 degree bend so you can see here what is the angle of the bend this angle of bend is 90 degree and uh, that means we can take eight times and another other condition is which is subject to the maximum of 16 times the diameter of the bar so uh, what will be the anchorage length of the bend l naught that is eight times diameter bar as already discussed that this angle for if it is was 45 degree then we have to take four times diameter of the bar uh, since in our case we have uh, bend it uh, by 90 degree so that means we can take double of this eight into diameter bar since the diameter bar was 12 mm so l naught comes out to be 96 millimeter now you have calculated l naught we are having the value of m1 we are having the value of v so we can uh, just do the calculation for the right side of this uh, equation and the left side we have already taken so after doing calculation we come out with the value that is 770 millimeter and what was the value of ld it was 564 and uh, as per this clause for simply supported type of case it should be less than this so again we can say this condition is also fulfilled so we can uh, write here that uh, the check for the development length is also okay. Now last part of the design problem is which is also very important part ultimately uh, you can say it is the concluding part of the design problem so this is the reinforcement detail so whatever we have designed what size of the slab etc reinforcement spacing diameter work every information you have to provide in as a reinforcement detailing so this was the uh, sketch for uh, one way reinforcement which we have taken that uh, this red color bars are the main reinforcement and the green color bar are the distribution steel and uh, ultimately we are able to get this uh, diagram that means 4000 millimeter was the clear span and uh, we have taken the sp uh, space or distance that is 0.1 of uh, 4000 that is 400 millimeter so that means at a distance of 400 millimeter from the face of support we can bend up the bars so ultimately we are able to bend up the bars so uh, this black color is the main reinforcement we have to show like this 12 mm dia bar at a spacing 150 mm center to center and uh, these blue color bars are distribution steel that is 10 mm dia bar at a spacing of 300 millimeter center to center so every information we have to just show here and uh, this 144 by the effective depth of the section which is from the top of the slab and uh, center of the main reinforcement and the overall depth of the slab is 180 millimeter so this was the total design of a one way type of slab and a simply supported type of slab which we have done in detail every point of our discussion we have taken into account and if you find any difficulty or any clarification you can just drop a question in the comment section uh, hopefully i will be definitely respond to your questions thank you